Do you want to work in a strict style, but you also love other people's styles and are consistently tempted to change your style so it's a little bit more like theirs or a little bit more like someone else's because you're just so inspired by everything and it's hard to lock into a style? In this episode, I'm gonna talk about that. So guys, if you like this video, please give it a like. And if you want to kind of keep up with all the videos that I post each week, be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell button so you know exactly when a new video drops. Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're having a good day. It's Wednesday here and I'm actually too busy to be recording a video, so I'm not taking too much effort to make my backgrounds pretty today and the laundry machine is running because we're doing laundry today but I wanted to just you know give you something today show up and do something for this week so I do have a question from Georgina Garrigan and she says and I hope you can hear me over the draining laundry machine I'm very sorry about that but that's just the way it is today so I have a question from Georgina Garrigan and this came in a few months ago and I almost missed it because it showed up in my spam folder but she says, hi Tom, I have a question about illustration style. One of my goals for next year is to create an illustration portfolio that has a consistent style. I feel like I'm finally developing an artistic voice that feels authentic to me and now I just need to create a body of work that reflects that. However, I often find myself getting distracted by other illustrations or art that I see both in online and real world spaces. I wonder, oh, could I illustrate more like that? Or should I go more in that direction instead? Or should I use that style of brush instead? I find it hard to commit to a specific direction since there are so many possibilities. My Instagram account is a reflection of this and I think there is no consistency and it frustrates me because I want to start looking professional. Have you any advice on being disciplined and decisive when it comes to your illustration? I am a graphic designer by day and I have a strong idea of how important visual identity is. I just seem to be struggling to apply this to myself. Thank you and happy holidays and new year. So this came in, I guess, in December. So thank you, Georgina, for your question. And let me just tell you, I relate. I so relate to this. And thank you for a very succinct and well-written email. So there's a few things here. I think first, you shouldn't feel bad about being interested and inspired by other people's work. I think that's a good thing. It shows that you have your eyes outside of just your own little bubble, and that's great. That's gonna help you to have influences and ideas coming from other places. For, for me, in my situation, because I have the exact same thing, there's a few things that are helpful. The first is just recognizing the difference between style and voice. So style is something you see in an image. It's superficial, it's color, line quality, and stuff like that. Voice is something deeper, something that perhaps you might be able to see in one image, but you're more likely to see it across a body of work. And so you begin to see your voice when you look at your work as a whole. One thing I like to say is style is skin deep and voice comes from deep within. This kind of plays into some other thoughts I have about like when people copy me, for instance, or if people were to copy you, they might be able to copy a look that you have in your work, but they'll never have your soul. They'll never have what's inside, your experiences, your personality, your character, all those, all those things that kind of make you interested in what you do and why you use the tools you use why you illustrate using the subjects that you use. So that's kind of like the style versus voice thing. Now, that being said, you can still look at your portfolio and say, yeah, these come from me. They're all the same voice, but I want to make that voice clearer. I want to make that voice something that other people can immediately sense that is mine. It's ownable. There are simple things you can do to bring your style into being more consistent. You can use similar colors over and again. I have go-to colors and 
And even when I have to use colors that are prescribed by the client, I'll often work in one or two colors that I like to use as well, or I'll, I'll, I'll kind of shift the colors that they give me, at least some of them, in a way that looks a little bit more like the way I use colors. So I like to sometimes use like soft pinks, for instance, or, or instead of a, a, a total black, I'll, I'll do something that's kind of a more of a dark blue, a very deep midnight blue. And so I might try and swing the colors that the client gives me a little toward this, lighten them up a little bit, make them brighter, less saturated. And I can't always do this, but that's just one thing I do is, is I, I, I use color as a way of making my work a little bit more my own. Basically, in, in any piece, I'm looking for ways that I can in, inject my personality, insert myself, and transform an image into something that's much more personal to me without compromising the things that aren't about me at all. And that's usually the case in client work, is the work is somewhat about you because you're the maker, but you have to speak for someone else. But you have to also assume that they like what you do and want you to do that. That's that's kind of the X factor or the, the secret sauce in in illustration work is that you that you put into the work. Another thing that I do is of course I I have I have worked over the years to have a consistent way of drawing people and it does take a little bit of discipline because there's always something I want to try that's different and I am tempted sometimes to change how I draw eyes or how I draw noses or things like that and I'm actually being a little bit more experimental these days where I'm, I'm kind of branching out a little bit more and seeing what else I can add to my style repertoire or, or, or kind of pushing myself to see if, if maybe those things don't matter as much as I thought they did. But for the last two years at least, I've really been consistent in how I draw people. And, and I, I approach it not so much in the sense like, I love how this person looks. It's the best, it's the best drawing of a person that anyone's ever done. I don't feel that way, but it is, it is consistent and true to the way I, I do it. I've done it over and again. And that means that it becomes symbolic and people can recognize it. Symbolic in the sense that no one, people aren't asking me to draw people realistically or, or in, in a award-winning way necessarily, but they're asking me to convey an idea or a concept and the person is an actor in, in that scene. So it's more important that I have ways of drawing people that allows them to act out that scene or represent an idea without being distracting. And when you have a consistent way of drawing people, that's that. It becomes kind of it kind of becomes less important about how exactly they're drawn and more about what they're doing or, or their situation. Find a way of drawing people that you can live with, that you like, you can use consistently, and that's adaptable to different situations for depicting concepts. Uh, another thing that I, I just decided is like for the most part I I don't do realism. And, and by avoiding realism, I, I'm not limited to doing scenes that may, might change style from time to time. I can keep things more symbolic and flexible and abstract in that way. One thing I would recommend you do is take a look at other illustrators you admire. Take a look at their portfolios or their Instagram feeds and see how they present themselves. There are illustrators who have a very strict adherence to a particular style. And then there are illustrators who are looser and have no problem doing different styles. And somehow all the styles they do feels like it comes from them. So in the first case, we have people like Olympia Zignoli, who has an extremely strict style for the most part. She does get experimental, but most of her work is very clean vector-based lines, the same kind of color palettes, the same way of drawing people. Even like all our concepts will use the same kind of composition, like a, a person 
close-up or the body of a person to represent a whole bunch of different ideas and they're people like Olympia are very good at using a very limited tool set to communicate ideas now there are other illustrators like Kyle Webster who is an amazing illustrator and he's so flexible he he can work in almost any style and he's good at all of them and that that's a little bit nauseating just to think that someone can be so good at so many different styles but what's more interesting about Kyle is that you can look at almost all his work and see the Kyle in it and it's not just because he puts a signature on everything which is probably an important thing to do when you're working in different styles but he's just a, a master of all like he and he he, he has a, a voice that he can apply to these things and I don't I don't exactly know how he does it but my point is to look at the different portfolios and say how do you want to present your work what category do you want to be in? do you want to be in the strict style category or do you want to be in more of the open to style changes but consistent voice category and then maybe there are other qualities that your work takes that binds it together and this is what I call a common thread so a long time ago probably four years ago I was probably a lot more concerned with this question than I am today and thinking like all my work because I was doing design I was doing illustration websites there was all kinds of different work but my friend just noted in passing but I really embraced what he said he said that my work had a kind of vibrant energy or something like that had an energy to it and that meant a lot to me and it made me realize like I do have a creative soul and it's coming up my work and that was good that was really encouraging I think that's the thing to look for in your body of work is that common thread and that's that plays back into voice it's the idea that you may not be doing the same thing over and over again and have that consistent style that you're aiming for but you do have some kind of common thread look at your work regularly and try to identify those threads have a friend that you trust creatively to tell that to you, like to maybe reflect back to you what they think is the common thread. And then on a regular basis, you can curate your portfolio to maybe bring out that common thread and make it stronger. Or maybe there's different threads and there's one thread that you think is the most important. Maybe it's your use of color. Maybe it's how you draw people. Maybe it's that you're conceptual. Maybe it's that you like to draw very elaborate scenes. Maybe you like to draw just like tons of little doodles and they all kind of spill out all over the page like uh, Carson Ting, for instance. And within that, there can be so much variety, but the approach is always the same. So that's another way of being consistent is just that you have a, a, a similar approach. Maybe you're a, a map illustrator, so most of your illustrations are maps. That is a common factor that makes your work consistent. Maybe you're a muralist and all your work is very interlocking and abstract and kind of like kind of like Carson Ting, for instance. It's, it's his work. So much of it is so much of his work is images just sprawling across a wall or a page, and it's it's very organic and flowy, for instance. So look at other illustrators' work. Look at how they present themselves and their sets of work and ask yourself how you want to uh, do that with your own feeds or your own portfolio. And that can at least help you set up some goals that you can strive for. As a designer, you're going to end up doing lots of different things. And so one thing that I do is I control the thumbnails on my homepage and that allows me to present all kinds of different projects in a way that looks curated and consistent, even if the projects themselves get very different in different ways. I want to talk about this forever, but I do have to go. But I just want to say, be patient with yourself. This is a long journey and you're probably kind of closer to the beginning than the end. And I very much hope that. I hope I'm closer to the beginning than the end. But be patient with yourself. Allow yourself to have fun maybe allow yourself to explore all these different styles in a safe space in a place where you don't have to share it 
or maybe on a separate Instagram feed that you've created specifically for your experiments and then work to make your main feeds, your main presentation of your work more, more consistent through some of the ideas that I've already talked about. But definitely just be patient, enjoy the process, get into stuff, try different mediums, and then look at ways that, look, at, look for those common threads that bind them together and look for your voice. Look for what it is about your work that makes it undeniably yours and 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 that's probably more useful than forcing yourself to work in a single style that you grow to resent because it's not challenging you anymore so that's really um all i have time for but i would love to go more into this question so guys i'll pass the question over to you how important is having a consistent style to you? How has that been in your professional or personal work? Would you rather have a strict style? Is that something you aim for? Or do you aim more for having the ability to work in many different styles? I'd love to know your thoughts on these things. If you like this video, please hit like. And if you like the videos in this channel, please consider subscribing. And when you subscribe, you hit the little bell button and that helps you know right away when a new video gets posted. I post these videos usually earlier in the week but sometimes randomly depending on, on how things are going here. So if you hit the bell button you'll be notified exactly when I post a new video and you'll be able to keep up with the vidcast. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great week. Keep making great work and keep asking great questions.